Of course, you know, the Wendell Furman, the Wendell Furman study, I, I think either Harlow or Harlow and Sumi that, um, that did that with isolated uh, recent, recent monkeys, right? They put in the monkey therapy, which was a younger, uh, younger peer in with the isolated uh, animal to see whether that would rehabilitate them from the, you know, the, the, the first effects of the social isolation. species. There's candidate genes known in other species. 
So I didn't talk about this at all, but at least in our sample, Jordan Smolder finds these, these candidate genes that are known to increase anxiety or inhibition in mice, looks for them in our kids and finds them. And he found a couple, and that ultimately could inform something about understanding either the etiology of anxiety or more in a more pragmatic way, developing medications that could assist social anxiety patients or something. So I think there's a little bit of mileage in that. I mean, I guess I think it is a risk factor, not a cause. You know, so if you're trying to identify what might be different potential risk factors that might increase likelihood, but then it's not going to be a single cause. It's going to be one risk factor in combination with others. So what this always talks to the media is, okay, so what does it interact with? And you're talking about in your clinic families who have a whole, probably a whole host of other with that, with some of which may or may not have been measured often, right? That it's interacting with some of these other kinds of groups. So I would answer it historically. Um, and I would say that historically, um, the, uh, if you look at the, the development of the, uh, con uh, the conceptualization of behavioral inhibition as a temperament type, it has nothing to do <coughs> with, uh, and was unrelated uh, when it was um, developed and when the first uh, papers, empirical papers, were uh, uh, presented describing the, the, the aggregation of both behavioral and physiological measures. It had nothing to do with social anxiety whatsoever. The link, the, 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 um, Innovation, the innovative link that Jerry Kagan uh, uh, made uh, was the link to the neuroscience literature that at that time was uh, identifying certain structures in midbrain, the amygdala, and in particular the central nucleus of the amygdala in terms of its output, uh, uh, to uh, the, that literature, that social, that neuroscience literature, um, was a link for him in terms of trying to understand these physiological uh, indices that uh, he had found in the behaviorally inhibited children. So elevated heart rate, increased cortisol, uh, enhanced startle, all those kind of things which happened to be uh, outputs from that were found in rats, in rodents to be uh, increased when you either stimulated the central nucleus of the amygdala or as a function of fear conditioning. The neuroscience literature was doing that work in part because they were in, they, from a uh, biological psychiatric approach. So the work on fear conditioning was seen as a model uh, for understanding anxiety. Uh, and so that's the bridge. And Dina's story about Jerry Kane coming to give uh, grand round at uh, MGH is probably more uh, apocryphal than she may, may have known at that time because it probably was, it probably created that final link between behavioral inhibition and uh, social anxiety. But I don't think that behavioral inhibition uh, initially in Kate's mind or in our uh, approach uh, is, was thought of or related to directly to social anxiety. It was seen as a temperament. And temperaments, there are, there are many different temperaments. There may be an exuberant temperament. There may be a, uh, if you go back to the Thomas and Chess work, you know, you have uh, multiple different types of temperaments. Uh, easy, slow to warm up. Uh, in fact, I remember once giving a talk and Stella Chess was in the audience and she's uh, on behavioral inhibition and she said, I don't know why you're calling it behavioral inhibition. Those are my slow to warm up kids. <laughs> now, I don't think Stella Chess, even though she, I think she was a psychiatrist, I don't think that she was thinking that slow to warm up kids are uh, at risk or are identical to uh, children with social anxiety. 